Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. All right, guys, let's do this problem that says determine the reactions at the supports. Now, the supports are at A and at B, and the reactions are in B. You got F of B, Y, and let's call this reaction F of B, X. And in A, we have an F of A. Let's just call it F of A. And F of A does not have a horizontal reaction because if you look, the piece looks something like this. And if something was to push it, it would tip over. So it can have a reaction horizontal. So it only has a vertical reaction. Oh, what did I write there? Only. There we go. Okay. So whenever you have um, distributed loads, what you want to do is you want to erase the distributed load and you want to replace it by an equivalent ref resultant force. And we know how to do that from previous chapters. So <coughs> let me erase it to better visualize it. Okay. Go back. And now you want to replace it. Since it's a rectangular force, it, the equivalent is the force right in the middle. This is the middle of this uh, hypotenuse, what it will be of this triangle, the middle of the piece of 800 newtons per meter. That will be 4k newtons. And let me write down right, that right here. Now, how do we know this length? This is a triangle. And you know that a squared plus b squared equals 2c squared. You know that a is 4, b is 3. 4 squared plus 3 squared is equal to uh, c squared. So square rooted, let's put it there. C, and we only take the positive because square root could be positive or negative, but for obvious reasons, we only take the positive. So 4 times 4 is 16, 3 times 3 is 9, that's 25, that would be 5. Now 5 times, I mean, 800 newtons per meter, and you have 5 meters, that would be 4K, because 5 times 4 is 4,000. So that's how we get this number. C is equal to 5, let's put it here. Then 5 meters at 800 newtons per meter. The meters cancel out and that will be 4k newtons. That's how we got this number. Okay, now that we replace it for an equivalent resultant force. Let me just scratch that. Now we can get to writing our uh, equations to finding the reactions at the support. So let's assume x is going to the left and y is going straight up. And let's look at the angles. I'm going to call this angle theta, okay? And I have another triangle right here. I'm going to call this angle beta. So we got theta and beta. Now theta can easily be found by doing the tangent inverse of 3 over 4. Why 3 over 4? This is 3 and this is 4. And this is a triangle. This is some basic trigonometry. And that means that theta is equal to 36.87 degrees. And we know that beta, which is this angle right here, is equal to 90 minus theta. Why is that? Because this angle is 90 degrees, and this angle is theta. Right, so if you move it, if you're on 80 degrees, you're gonna know that this angle is theta. So as you can see, they complement each other. So 90 minus theta, not zero. And that is equal to 53.13 degrees. We're gonna need these two angles to do all our calculations. The second thing that uh, we're gonna need, but 
my, my calculator, but I'm going to calculate it now. It's the distance, this distance between A and B. And you know you have a smaller triangle here of 3. So let me draw the triangle right here, which is this triangle right here. So this is theta, which we know. This is the distance that we're trying to find between A <coughs> and B. And this distance here is 3. So you know that D cosine of theta is equal to 3. We know theta. So D is equal to 3 over cosine of theta. That distance D is equal to 3.75 meters. Which is D, the distance from A to B, just so you know. Okay, so I think now we have everything we need to find to find all the values. So in the X, what do we have uh, in the X? We have this 4K, and we know this angle is theta. So this 4 kilonewton force is going to the left times the cosine of beta, which we found right here to be 53.13, plus f of b x which is this force right here so basically i made a bit of a mess let me clean it up um, i just want to clean it up so you guys have a clear idea there we go so basically it's this X component of this 4 kilonewton force going to the left and the reaction at B that is going to the right. That's what that is. And this is equal to 0. And we know beta. So we can solve for F of B of X to be 2.4 kilonewtons. This is kilonewtons. So let's do the Y now. In the Y, we have the Y component on this 4K force, and we have F of B, Y going up. But we also have the reaction at A. So let's write this down. Minus 4K times the sine of beta, which we have, plus F of A, plus F of B of Y is equal to 0. Why would it write? f of b of y so this is one equation i'm going to call this equation one now we can do the sum of the moments at b is equal to zero and i'm going to assume kind of clockwise is positive so i'm going to do the moments at this point now the moments at this point this is where it gets a little tricky you know that we have a force, we, we don't really have a force, but let's just draw this triangle right here that is called F of A, and this is a right triangle, okay? So let me draw that triangle right here. Um, somewhere I have space. We have F of A. we have this right triangle right here. And let's call this f of a prime. So looking at this triangle, you know that f of a prime sine of beta is equal to f of a. So f of a is equal to f of a over sine of theta, right? So this this f of a prime will be like the component of f of a that's generating a moment around b because the whole force is not generating it's not generating a moment because remember the moment only occurs at a ninety degree angle. So this is the f of a prime that we need in order to calculate the moment. So let me write this down right here. 4k times 
2.5. This is the, the moment generated by this force, which is at a 90 degree angle right here. And it's at a distance. It's at a distance of 2.5. Why is it at a distance of 2.5? Because it's right in the middle. And you know that the length of the beam is 5. Hopefully that was clear. Minus. It's positive because it's trying to twist it this way. Minus f of a prime times 3.75, which is the distance that we calculated right here. It's the distance from b to a. So let's call it f of a prime times 3.75. And that is equal to 0. But we know that f of a prime, and we want to put it in terms of f of a. Why do we want to put it in terms of f of a? Because that's what we have right here. That way we have two equations that we can solve. Or actually one equation because f of a is actually the f of uh, b is y. It's not here, so we will be able to solve it right away. So 4k times 2.5 minus f of a prime. We replace it by f of a over sine of theta times 3.75. It's equal to, oops, it's equal to zero. The only variable in this equation is f of a, so we can actually uh, solve the equation and find it. This is some basic math, but I'm still going to do it. f of a is equal to 4k times 2.5 all over 3.75 times the sine of theta. We know uh, we know beta, we found it before to be 53.13, so we plug that in and we get that f of a is equal to 3.333 kilonewtons. And then we plug in f of a into the other equation that we found before, I think we called it equation one. So we plug it into equation one, and with that, you can find f of b y to equal to 4k sine of 53.13, which is theta, minus f of a, which we just found. So f of b y is equal to negative 0.1333 kilonewtons which means that f of b y is actually going down, it's reacting down. This is reacting up and this is reacting to the right like we said. So f of b x, f of b y and f of a. And we got that f of a is equal to 3.333 kilonewtons. And f of b, let me write it in Cartesian form, which is 2.4 k in the i minus 1 point minus 0 0.1333 k in the j, going down. And this is all in newtons. Final answer for the reaction at a, and final answer for the reaction at b. Now, I just want to uh, re-explain a little piece because uh, I don't think I was very clear on it, which is the part where we did this, the moment right here. So when we did the moments around B, we have this force, which is at an 80 degree angle right at, at the half point of the beam. And then we have F of A, but F of A can be divided into two components, this component and this component. Now this component right here is not generating any moment around B because it's going straight away from B, it's parallel to it. But this component which we called F of A prime is the one generating moment and that's how we calculated the moment before. Hopefully I made myself clear. Alright all right, guys, so final answer and final answer.